Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? I'm ready for the event. NBC Today, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. I have you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station. Good morning, Dr. Nyberg. Now, I am seeing your hair standing on end there. And for most of us, uh, as we know, washing our hair is an everyday occurrence. But for you, it takes on a whole new meaning. Tell me about the video you decided to share and you posted on YouTube. Well, I was amazed how many people I had asked me how I wash my hair, and I guess it is unusual. There have been many women in the past that have uh, flown on short-duration missions with long hair and then a couple on long-duration missions, too, and I, I guess it is fascinating for folks. And so I thought I would try and answer that question by showing, and it's actually quite simple. I think some people, I've even seen some of the comments from the from the YouTube video and, and people commenting on how, how difficult it is, and I actually think it's quite easy. It uses very little water. Um, um, and just a little bit of the, the no rinse shampoo, and, and I, I don't think it's much of a problem at all. Are you surprised by the reaction, the amount of publicity you got from this one video posting? Actually, I was very surprised. It uh, got a lot more uh, more uh, views than I would have expected. But like you said, it's a common everyday thing. People have to have to clean up every single day, and so I guess it's just it's just fascinating to see it done in an environment that's different from what you do it in yourself. Well, you mentioned you need the dry shampoo and the water. So, what other tools do you need? Basically, just a comb and a towel. I have a, what I use is a drink bag of water like this. This drink bag holds about 250 milliliters of water, and I seldom use even a quarter of it um, when I'm washing my hair. Once a week, I'll give it a more thorough washing and use a little bit more, but usually I just use a little bit. And then uh, a bottle of no rinse shampoo. I'm actually, I think this is only the second bottle that I'm on. I've been here about two and a half months. And, uh, and then a comb just to comb it through and get, get the sna snarls out and, uh, and a towel, towel to dry it. Now, I, I know this is a little bit of a juggling act as with zero gravity. You're holding the microphone and you've got the dry shampoo, but would you care to give us a little demo and explain the process a little bit? Well, without adding water exactly to my hair right now, I can show you. Uh, usually what I do is just um, take the water and I just kind of add it to my, the scalp area. In fact, sometimes I wash only the scalp and don't bother getting it to the rest of my hair. Um, and then I take the, uh, my comb usually and, and run the water up through, through my hair and then add a little bit of the no rinse shampoo to the scalp as well and rub it in and sometimes use a towel or a washcloth to kind of to kind of, uh, there, you get a lot of uh, your natural body oils, and also my hair picks up a lot of the dust or anything that's in the air, which is evident by the brush that I use every so often. Um, and so then I just uh, dry it and comb it through again, and it's easy as that. What happens to all the extra water as it floats off in the zero gravity environment? Well, what we're, what we're trying to do here is demonstrate on the International Space Station of recycling things, which is a necessity, really, because we can't bring up all the water we need. So we have a water processing system that takes all of the condensate from the air and actually our urine as well and processes it into drinking water. And so it's very, it's a very much a closed system. Every so often we'll get some fresh water. We just had some delivered on the um, Japanese cargo vehicle that arrived last week. And, but, but most of the water we use is recycled water. And I think that's very important for future missions to come when we are heading further distances away and don't have the supply or resupply of cargo vehicles. And Dr. Nyberg, as you know, your colleague and fellow astronaut uh, Chris Hatfield made quite a name for her, himself posting several videos while he was there at the International Space Station as well, including the David Bowie cover, Space Oddity. Are you taking over for him, and how much more are you going to share with us from space? 
Well, I don't really think I'm taking over for him. Uh, Chris is very unique in his talents and abilities to reach out to people. And, I, you know, I, I just, I'm just not, that, not like that. I don't have the charisma. I don't think that he has. But I'm trying to show what I can um, in some of the pictures that I take. And I've, I've been sharing um, some of the views from Earth, my favorite views, because I think it's great that others who don't get the opportunity and aren't, don't have the privilege of coming here to see exactly what we see. Well, it's been a pleasure talking with you. We look forward to more of your postings, Dr. Karen Nyberg, and I know your family in Minnesota is especially proud. Take care of yourself. Thanks a lot. It was nice talking to you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you, NBC Today Station. We are now resuming operational audio configurations.